And good evening. Uh, welcome everybody to uh, the 24th meeting of the 13th elected town council of the community of Happy Valley Goose Bay. Um, your agenda is there in front of you. I'll entertain a motion to adopt the agenda as it is presented. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wallace, seconded by Councillor Bennett. Any discussion, additions, whatever to our agenda? All right, uh, none heard. All those in favor indicate what aye. 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 Contrary minded. All right, we've accepted the ad uh, uh, agenda. This evening, delegations. <laughs> the minutes of September 27th, just the minutes in your package incorrectly state September 2nd. Okay, yeah. So we'll make sure that those are corrected for the book. So when we adopt them, we'll. Good. Okay. All right, delegations. Madam CAO. So I understand we have two delegations. Okay, we're going to uh, hear from our. Uh, our second, the, the lady that indicated uh, first from the college. Jacqueline Penny. Jacqueline Penny. So good evening, Jacqueline. Thanks very much for uh, coming to council. Um, it's an opportunity for you to, uh, to make a delegation or a presentation to council. Uh, the rules are you'll have 10 minutes to, uh, to present. There won't be any engagement between uh, council if there's a question maybe, but there'll be no debate or uh, uh, conversation and um, you can start your presentation. Okay. Thanks very much for coming. Well, I know this is a topic that everyone's been hearing about, which is the transient community that we have here. So I work in childcare. I did leave Goose Bay in June of 2019, and it was an issue there, not as big of an issue as it is today. I did notice when I came back in February of 2021, when it came to that summer, I saw the tremendous change from that June to two years later. Um, I work in childcare, very close to where the transient community hangs out. And we, I remember at one point, we used to be able to take the children up the bike path. We used to go take them for walks up there. We'd go back and we won't even attempt that anymore. Um, we're kind of limited for our walks. We usually just go right around our facility building because, <coughs> and even at times then, we still have to head back to the child care center because we just, we have precious cargo with us that we just need to, we need to be careful with them, right? So we're in our backyard and this happened probably about a month ago somebody came behind the college residents the, and they were urinating within 12 feet of our backyard where we had children outside playing. Luckily, none of them noticed and we did do the proper chain of command and all that stuff, but I just think that it's sad for the children in this town who are growing up and this is just normalized for them, right? Like. There's so many things that do need to change for these children. Like, this is off the childcare topic. My son was walking from high school to the Y at the end of the day, and he's like, Mom, I saw somebody with two cases of beer go in the woods. And so, like, it's just sad that him at 14, and it's just kind of sloughed off like it's a normal thing. And we park. Our cars are parked as the child care center. We park and we're right outside that airplane. And every day after work when we're parked there, I try to avoid it at all costs. But every day we are harassed for anything we can give them. Money, cigarettes, and they don't remember from the weeks and weeks before that none of us smoke. <laughs> so they can ask every day and we're not gonna have anything for them. So. It's just, it's just frustrating being on that end and it being so close to our child care center. And we kind of have our hands tied with what we can do. And I know that you guys are working hard with trying to rectify the situation, but I'm just hoping that another side of the story kind of 
helps the situation out. I'm not normally a person who voices my opinion in public or on Facebook or anything like that. But I do hope that we can get this under. Yeah, I think that's all I've got. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. And um, um, I know it, you know, it takes a, a lot when you, you're not that type of person to come and, uh, and speak. But I, uh, I really want to thank you uh, from the perspective that it gives an ep a different lens mm -hmm. on, uh, on this very difficult issue. And, uh, you know, I, I, can, I can tell you that there's not a day goes by that all of us aren't engaged yeah. in discussion or meetings kind of deal with, uh, with, uh, with representatives from the provincial government. And, uh, you know, we continue to, to try and, uh, and bring it to the forefront to, uh, to get people to understand the complexity. And, and the approach we've taken is from a public safety and there's no one, you know, more deserving of public safety than kids in the daycare yeah. and uh, to hear that your program is impacted is is sad yeah. and uh, I can tell you that after this evening I'll send two or three texts to some of those ministers and ask them to uh, to just have a listen to you uh, and the, the first part of our meeting here this evening uh, yeah. just that you know they, they capture that that other lens yeah. that uh, that we are you know we're, we're struggling in some regards and uh, we're struggling for solutions so yes for sure Kay, thank, thank, thank you, you so very much. much. Yep. Um, all right. Our second delegation is no stranger to uh, to our community. It's our MHA, uh, Mr. Trimper. Same rules uh, apply to uh, to yourself that uh, were for uh, for Jacqueline. So uh, the floor is yours. Welcome thank to you, Council uh, thank Chamber. You, Mayor, thank you, Council. I'm certainly used to working with the clock. So uh, thanks for the opportunity to speak. Uh, it's interesting just following up from these very uh, passionate uh, uh, words from the college and, and what uh, they and everybody else in this community is facing. I am a proud resident of this community, so I can uh, only say to you and to everyone else listening and in the community and throughout the district and across the province that uh, I certainly understand myself um, what we are all feeling. And um, as uh, you and I, Mayor, and others on this council, and staff, and everyone else have said, you know, if we only knew what the immediate short-term solution was, we'd be all over it right now. And uh, it, it's elusive. I do believe that the long-term uh, solution, I, I believe we will get there. Uh, I believe we can find uh, a way to provide help for those who are really crying out, who are struggling. I was at a community event on Sunday and um, a gentleman came in that I know, uh, he, he's, he's, he's battling, he's challenged with, with addictions and um, he gathered, we were, we were enjoying a meal and he asked if he could partake and we all said certainly. And after he finished he stood up and he wanted all of our attention, there was about 30 people there. And he spoke about his, his challenges that he's facing and how he wanted to express with everything else going on around him and himself uh, the appreciation of the community, what he's facing and dealing with. But he recognizes the, the terrible, um, hmm, terrible pressures that we're all under, uh, whether we're uh, trying to raise children in a very safe and secure way, run businesses, run a municipality, uh, respond on behalf of the provincial government. This is, this is an amazing challenge. We are a hub community and um, in my discussions with other ministers between yourselves, I mean as the mayor said, he and I speak about this issue just about every day. And uh, as I bring it up with them, it, we are seeing uh, an unfortunate increase in, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure, I'm still, I believe we're still looking for a term, but you know these folks are transient. They're often dealing with mental health issues and addictions and challenges, and and then there's the public safety side that is the immediate short-term preoccupation uh, with the delegation before me and what uh, we've been dealing with for the last several months and years. So uh, what I can continue to do is commit to being available to all of you and anyone listening to uh, to try to seek ways. My last few days, including my last couple of hours, have been looking at particular uh, additional supports that can, uh, 
can help businesses in the retail sector, uh, those operating any kind of establishment, uh, whether food and beverage in town, and working with different ministers to see what resources are available. We're looking around to some other jurisdictions. Nova Scotia comes to mind, and I had a very productive meeting last Friday morning uh, with a resident and a business representative looking at what Nova Scotia has been doing. So I've taken that, um, that example of it's essentially within their workplace NL uh, capacity, so I'm hoping soon to have a representation here that can work again with our business community and provide uh, that, that safety and security. It's tough. Um, I, I look forward to hearing from anyone. Um, I has also have not been engaging on this topic on, on Facebook. I just find Facebook has a very important role for, for leaders to get the words out, but it's not a place for, for debate. And it's not a place for anger. It's a place for, uh, it's a place for disseminating information. And uh, my office, and I know you all, are been uh, more than available, and you've, uh, you've come in at a time when the community is very challenged. And I just uh, want to say here publicly, I, I, uh, I appreciate the working relationship we have and will continue to work as closely with you as I can. Um, on a couple of other topics, I, I wanted to just uh, to raise with council here this evening and the mayor and I and the CAO have been talking a little bit of your, your budget planning exercises coming up uh, and, and soon be submitting um, you know, your plans for the upcoming fiscal year. Uh, I wanted to indicate that uh, while the province always likes to say it's not a wash in cash, it just had a fiscal update and w it is looking to enjoy a, uh, a surplus of some $479 million. That's not all available for the town of Happy Valley Goose Bay, but um, we'll take the, the province is enjoying a better fiscal position than they had uh, predicted and uh, that certainly, you know, People can say whatever they like about that, but it's certainly better than facing a deficit. And uh, we will, uh, I look forward to again supporting the town on its request for all kinds of infrastructure. Um, we certainly am aware of some of your priorities and uh, we've started talking to different departments about that. So I look forward to escorting you down as we did back in, uh, back in uh, June. I also wanted to indicate that uh, I'm fresh off discussions. Um, we. Uh, the last three weeks now we've been sitting. Uh, this is a constituency week. We're working with about, I'm, I'm thinking close to 20 pieces of legislation, everything from a future fund to pay equity legislation that a lot of these things have direct implications on, on the municipality and at an individual level or in terms of how you run your, your own governance structure. So um, th there's a lot of, I would suggest, very positive progressive moves that we'll all be uh, aspiring to. Um, Route 520 is uh, you've noted there's finally some start on, on repairs to that and much of it runs through your municipality. Uh, I'm fresh off also meetings with the Minister of Transportation and Infrastructure looking at further upgrades, further repairs that will be done to that highway continuing on next year. So that wasn't a one-off this year. Uh, I'll wait for the Minister to make his announcements and we'll have all the T's crossed and so on, but there's more work coming on that next year so you can look forward to that. Uh, I also wanted to say here, because it's very much a part of our economic engine and, and it's the liaison with Five Wing, and I know Council had a very good briefing with the Lieutenant Colonel. Uh, I also participated, I've been participating in conversations with him uh, and other uh, leaders in the community, and they're going very well, so I look forward to investments and, and uh, a brighter future on the wing and uh, the important role the town has as a welcome man. Not sure where I am on 10 minutes, but... Uh, you got about three minutes left. Okay. Um, I'd also like to mention, I think my final time, I'd like to take on health care. It, uh, it dominates uh, my office and what we do, and I know it dominates probably many of the issues you personally and you deal with as a council. Um, the Health Accord uh, was a monumental, huge exercise. Uh, two very competent people uh, co-chaired that exercise. The Accord has been released. Uh, and it's now undergoing implementation. Some things have already started. Uh, many others are going to take a couple of years. Probably most important from a municipality perspective is that you're going to see a disappearance of the regional health authority. So Labrador Grenfell Health, as we know it, will disappear. We're going to be merging into a single healthcare entity. We, uh, 
while that sounds a little ominous for us in Labrador, I've been saying to folks that if we had all of the services and capabilities that we require as a society, I would fight tooth and nail to, to keep it here. But we don't. We, we, have a, we have a huge geography with just over half a million people, and in Labrador we're, we're challenged even more in that regard. So what we need is a very seamless way for, for people who are seeking medical care, whether it be of a sort of regular patient checkup through to emergency and more complicated services in St. John's, we need, need ways to that, for that to help and happen in a much more seamless way than it, it's been in the past. So frankly, based on my last seven years in representing Lake Melville, I welcome what I see coming so far. I would encourage council that as you're running into issues and anyone else listening on health care on matters and concerns, uh, reach out to me as, as you're doing on other government departments. I, I'm available. Uh, my perspective just changed a little bit a few, about a month or so ago in the legislature, but uh, the doors always remain open between my office <coughs> and the various government departments, so I look forward to, uh, to continuing to uh, represent you and, and do what I can to assist this council. Thanks, Mayor and Council. We're right on time. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Um, door's always open. It's a good uh, opportunity to hear. I will, uh, as I did, uh, I would ask you to send the Minister uh, of Justice and Public Safety a, a message that I sent him by text and through another minister that uh, we would like to see him here in town to uh, understand some of the issues and have a chat. Uh, Zoom call is nice, and we did get an immediate Zoom call, which, which was okay. But at the end of the day, um, there's nothing like actually interacting face-to-face -face and having these conversations. So, um, you know, if you'd extend that back to him, and I know there is a face-to-face -face planning for the acute response team, but uh, that's sometime in November. But, uh, you know, I think it's important to hear from folks like uh, Jacqueline, who spoke, uh, business folks around, and you know, just to, to physically see it makes a huge difference. Uh, and for those that say they understand, that are on the Zoom call and have been maybe in our community, um, no, you don't understand. Come live it and uh, face to face that, you know, talk to the folks that are dealing with that in the community that are dealing with stuff and challenges every day in terms of the transient uh, concerns and public safety concerns that we have, so. Will do, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, so uh, I forgot uh, when I was talking to Jacqueline. Uh, so the delegations, you're more than welcome to stay if you wish, uh, but you are also welcome to, uh, you, can, you can leave if you wish. It's up to entirely up to yourself. <laughs> Stuff gets, uh, you're more than welcome. Thanks for coming. Stuff gets a little, uh, a little dry, if, especially if you're not from a political nature. All right. Okay, so let's uh, go into, you have in front of you the, uh, the agenda, so next uh, item on the agenda is adoption of the previous minutes. So for the 23rd minutes, uh, the th 23rd meeting, sorry, of September 27th, and not September 2nd as indicated in our package. So everyone's had a chance to review. Um, motion to adopt, uh, made by Deputy Mayor Wallace, seconded by? To adopt the minutes. The is there any Arizona missions? We'll go into discussion for that. It's usually, right? Um, seconder. Seconded by uh, Councillor Brumfield. All right. In discussion, any Arizona missions? Yeah, I got one. Yep. You want to indicate it to us? On the recommendations, Kay. I don't know what page it is on here, um, but there's an error on there. Kay. Myself and Councillor Pam Dufflin voted against the uh, CGI uh, issue, but you got it backwards. You vote that we voted against the first item that came up, and we voted with that one. It was backwards. Okay, so that is... Uh, uh, like I said, I don't have the page in front of me. Do you... Okay, so I'm just looking at the minutes here. Does anybody... Kathy, would you recall? It would be when um, Councillor Bennett mentioned the recommendation. Yeah, that's why I'm just I'm wondering where it is though so we can correct it. Do, 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 do. Page seven? It was uh, seven? page seven? Was no, I'm asking. Is it oh, sorry. Seven, sorry. Um, he has mentioned that uh, it's in dealing with the motion to accept the CGI or Capital Crane. Yeah, because it says... Um, so where are you to what page, sorry? So page seven, yep, items okay. A and B, I think are the ones that are, we 
31st. So item A okay, says yeah. the pest management contract, mm -hmm. and it says Broomfield and Duffet yeah, voted okay. against item mm -hmm. B, page 7. Okay. So page 7. So you just want to make sure that's the one. Down one page if you look seven. at the... Uh, so is this one? You, they're numbered. That's the pest management? <laughs> yes, that's right. That's okay. the okay. So, okay, so it is page 7. It's motion number 2022-09-18. And it indicates that uh, Councillor uh, Brumfield and Duffett voted against that motion, which is incorrect. They voted in favor because the motion says all, uh, oh yeah, okay, so that, that needs to be changed. Uh, and then uh, the next item B, motion number 2022-09-11, indicates that all were in favor, and that's not the case. All right, so that's one note of change. Any others? All right. The date. Pardon me? That's, that's to know as well as the date. Okay. The date, the date, the date. Yeah, and the September 2nd, as indicated in our package, should be September 27th. All right, with those noted changes, all those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Contrary minded, we've adopted the minutes. Motion is passed. All right, correspondence. So we have a letter from Gear Corporation, and it's um, uh, from to address to Mayor and Council, and it is um, writing and request that the unpaid portion of Court Real Road be resurfaced before the winter months. It is in current condition when graded. The quality of the surface does not last when subjected to weather and heavy use. Uh, with Court Real Road, it is in the condition is a major impact on our customers who rent our warehouse due to uh, the poor driving conditions. And it goes on to describe some of the, uh, the, the conditions. So that's the correspondence that has been filed. I've only seen one piece of correspondence. There's no others, I guess, say eh? No, we're good. All right, uh, we'll move into committees. And uh, now that we have a new committee structure, um, we'll go with uh, community planning and uh, development and Councillor uh, Councilor Brumfield. Okay. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you, Your Worship. Yep. Okay, the meeting was held in the Town Hall boardroom at Tuesday, October 18th at 3 p.m. It was called to order. This is my first, I was appointed to the chair of this committee just last month, so this is my first time as the chair of this committee. So present was myself as the chair, Council Hayward Broomfield, Council Daryl Bennett, and Mayor George Andrews ex officio, Dear Fall Nadine McCauley, Engineer Randy Dillon, E.T. Mark Urquhart, and Executive Assistant Kathy Eddy were also in attendance. I'm going to say we have regrets from one chair, but we don't because one chair is vacant. Councilor Pamela Duffett has quit council, so this chair is now still vacant. She is on this committee as well. Okay, so we had no delegates. We reviewed the previous minutes and noted there's no errors or omissions noted. Still outstanding, previously deferred land applications pending government authorities review. That's in our packs, which we discussed about. Our new business, we had three crown land applications. We had one for a corner lot of Park Drive and Spruce Avenue, but we are denying or objecting to this one because of the simple fact we use this for snow clearing in the winter. The other land, the uh, discretionary application was for a home-based business. One was run by Lori Russell, operating virtual counseling service on 26 McDonald Drive. And this is in a zone that, meet, that is residential varied uh, designation that meets that one, and it's per permitted discretionary use. So it was placed on a website, and there's no comments or concerns, and there's an issue or a resolution come to accept this one. Other business requests, plan for development uh, amendment. Doggy daycare delayed their engineering tech advice that they received other uh, applications to amend their, uh, the town's development regulations. And as well, we also had, um, speak so, okay. And the, Another one for crown land applications for an extension on someone's backyard on Park Drive. This was actually applied for by the previous owner, but it was sold. And since then, 
Crown land will only grant it to the current landowner. So that's why this has come again to the council. And there's a recommendation for the hair, or no objection to that one. Our third land application was for an extension of the commercial lot on Kellen Drive. And council has denied this one as we are in the process of doing a water study in that area. And we're waiting till everything there has been, we study results come back and we see where we go from there. So the meeting was adjourned at 3.34 p.m. And the date of the next meeting is Thursday, November the 10th at 3 p.m. All right, uh, moved by Councillor Brumfield uh, that we accept the uh, Community Planning and Development Committee report uh, as presented, seconded by Councillor Winters. Discussion? Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor indicate with aye. Uh, aye. Contra minded? Accept the report. Recommendations, sir, from your committee. Okay, I have five recommendations under this committee. The first one is 10160. If, if I could, just for a point of order, when you're reading the home based business ones, is there any need, and I just asked for a point of clarification, is there any need to read all of the same conditions we always place on them? Is there any need to read them out at the, each one of the recommendations, or can we just, you know, where it says that? Um, Farley safety inspection as per, as per is it requirement or can we it's a requirement that goes under approval yes no question but in terms of for for us here this evening for the recommendations how it, how it were subject to conditions for the regular regulations. regular conditions yeah as that we put on here yeah i'm just i'm just thinking because if we get level, a lot of these it's a lot of time that is uh, is taken that really, right? Is everybody in favor of that? 100%. Yeah. yeah, because we we under we understand it's the same regulations that uh, same requirements that you're going to get from all the development uh, home based business ones, right? If there's anything different, I'm sure it would be recognized. But okay, continue, sir. Sorry. Okay, continue off our crown land applications. Like I said, the first one is for Clayton Mitchamore, 89 Park Drive. CBD committee recommends that council object to the crown land application 160160 on the rationale that the municipality uses this land for snow clearing and there is water and sewer infrastructure in this area as well. Okay, it's been uh, moved that we object to the application number 160160 uh, at uh, 89 Park Drive. Seconded by? Seconded by? No second. yeah. Okay, so, uh, seconded by Councillor Winters. Discussion. I just want to note that in the in our package here it says recommends, right? Recommends council object. object. Yes, object. Okay, my sorry. My bad. <laughs> all right, any further discussion? Any good discussion? <laughs> okay, all those in favor indicate with aye. Uh, aye. Contra reminded? All right. Next one, please, sir. Okay, the next one is also a Crown Land application. It's grant number 160233 by Carla Olford for land behind 20 Park Drive. CBD committee recommends that council have no objection to the Crown, Lap La Crown Land application 160233 on the condition that future development complies with the town's development regulations. All right, so moved by the community Planning and Development Committee through Councillor uh, Brumfield that we have no objections on uh, application number 160233. Seconded by Councillor uh, Bennett. Discussion. And just a point that in this particular one, this has been similar to other uh, properties have done the same thing in the in that in that area of town. So any other discussion? Okay, all those in favor indicate with aye. 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 Contra reminded. Motion is passed. Next item, sir. Okay, the next one is again a Crown Land application. Number 160240, Gary Callahan, 214 Cullen Drive. The committee recommends that council object to the Crown, Lap Crown <coughs> Land application 160240 on the rationale <coughs> that the municipality currently has a hold on new Crown Land applications in this area. Okay, it's. Uh, Moved by Community Planning and Development that we uh, object 
to the Crown Lands application of 160240. Seconded by? Seconded by? Uh, Deputy Mayor Wallace. Discussion? Any discussion? Well, Councillor Bennett. One piece of discussion. Uh, I was talking to the owner of that particular property, uh, and it is what it is. There's land study going on, um, water study going on, sorry, and all this is well. But uh, apparently they came to the town requesting uh, to go ahead with this and all that stuff. And I said, yes, go ahead with it. But there was a land freeze on it. So from my, all indications that I got, it was a lot of work to do what they done. And it could have been avoided. If, if it was explained to the particular person that there was a freeze on the land because the study was going on, we wouldn't be here with this today. So is there a name of who that person talked to? Municipal tech. No, no, our municipal tech? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's the information that I got, okay. and that's where some of the frustration yeah. comes from, yeah. Yeah. is that this is what went down, and yeah. we wouldn't be here discussing this today if he'd have known mm -hmm. first when he came here to discuss it with the municipal tech that, yeah. that uh, it was a freeze, yeah. and it could be resolved tomorrow, or it could be resolved six months from now. We don't know. Sure. But yep. it could have saved a lot of confusion. I just think uh, we've had some turnover too in that department. I'm not making, yes, no you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not making excuses, but we have had some turnover. Um, but we also have made a commitment that uh, we're not going to potentially increase any any problems with water or drainage or in that area by further developing until we, you know, Completely get our bad. study right. So Definitely. it's it's not uh, a ban. It's just a I guess a hiatus on development yes. in that in that area. And I think that's, you know, that's better in that regard than continuing yeah, to develop. Way. Right. Yeah. Is key. No, I hear you. Thank you, sir. Further discussion? Okay, all those in favor indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded. Next item, sir. Okay, the next item is an application for home based business application. 26 McDonald Drive, home based business, Lori Russell Virtual Counseling Services. The CPD committee recommends counsel approve the application from Lori Russell. For a home based virtual office, home based business located at 26 McDonald Drive with conditions that forced and the conditions attached. Okay. All right, so moved uh, that we, uh, we accept or we approve, I guess, or recommend uh, the home based business application for 26 McDonald Drive and Lori Russell. Moved by uh, Councillor uh, Broomfield, seconded by Councillor Bennett. Discussion? None heard. All those in favor indicate with aye. 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 Contrary minded? Motion is passed. Next item, please. Another one is the home based business. For five Laurier Loot, Tina Slade, Elux Solutions Cleaning Services. The CBD committee recommends council approve the application from Tina Slade for a home based business loco located at four Laurier Loop with our standard four conditions attached. Okay, five Laurier Loop. What's that? Five Laurier Loop, right? Yes. Okay. Five Laurier Loop. So moved uh, by the CPD uh, committee through Councillor Broomfield that we uh, recommend approving the application for Tina Slade, a home, ba home based business at Five Laurier Loop. Seconded by uh, Deputy Mayor Wallace. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded? Okay, we've accepted that recommendation. Okay, the Next final item, recommendation sir. again is a home based business. For 34 Davis Crescent by Jesse Slade, two, two talk enhancement statistician. The CBD committee recommends council approve the application from Je Jessica Slade for a home based business located at 34 Davis Crescent with our standard four conditions attached. All right, thank you. So moved by uh, CPD and Councillor Brumfield to uh, move that, that we recommend the home based business application for 34 Davis Crescent. Seconded by? Councillor uh, Bennett, discussion. Okay, all those in favor indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded. And the recommendation is passed. Thank you, sir. Anything else further from your committee? No, that is it. Thank all you. Right. Okay, so we move down the agenda. I usually have the agenda ripped off. There we go. 
All right, so we're moving to uh, community services and recreation. And uh, just uh, as, a, as a, a note, um, when we uh, first uh, came on council, we selected our committee structure. And uh, we kind of agreed that we would uh, shake things up or change around in uh, an attempt to build capacity from council. So at the end of the four-year term, everybody's had uh, experience in uh, all of the committees of council. And that's what we've done. So October this past month was our first uh, change and we've seen new chairs and some members have changed around and we've tried to uh, even out the uh, the committees as best we can so CSR uh, pass the uh, floor to Deputy Mayor Wallace thank you mayor the CSR committee met on October 5th 2022 at 4 30 p.m. in attendance were Councillor Daryl Bennett Councillor Denise Rumbold CAO Nadine McCauley Director, um, Community Service Recreation, Travis Ford, Community Development Manager, Greg Osmond, EA Kathy Eddy, and myself, Chair, Deputy Mayor Ella Wallace. Meeting called to order at 12.09 p.m. Review of previous minutes and action items with no errors or omissions. Discussions and new business in the uh, committee this time. Exciting, obviously, coming up next year. Uh, 2023 is an exciting year, but obviously leading up to that. The Labrador Winter Games. A letter was enclosed from the Labrador Winter Games chair with respect to the town submitting a team for the upcoming games in March 2023. So there's expression of interest to go out to seek a coordinator and then follow up with the expression of interest for team members. Labrador Winter Games. A meeting was held with... Um, Labrador Winter Games Committee with respect to uh, any equipment needed with at the Broomfield Arena and their willingness to contribute towards the cost of these, uh, these items. A letter is being drafted and the CSR uh, director is working on that one as we speak. Manager's report, Recreation Director Travis Ford presented his manager's report following another successful summer recreation program. The transition to the ice in the arena was a seamless a seamless one in ice hockey and figure skating programs are now in full swing. November 1st kicks off the town's annual pumpkin walk. Residents can drop off their pumpkins to Kinsman Park and the town recreation staff will place them along the walking trail for all to see. They will remain there until the snow comes and with the weather as we've been having that might be a while yet Shh. hopefully. <laughs> On Saturday November 5th the town will host the annual Guy Fox uh, bonfire night. The bonfire will be located behind the arena, followed by a skating session. Next meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, November 8th at 4.30 p.m. We have run one recommendation, and the meeting was adjourned at 1.08. All right, so it's been moved oh, uh, by Deputy Mayor Wallace that we uh, accept the Community Services and Recreation Committee report as presented. Seconded by Councillor Bennett. Sorry, my apologies. Oh. got a correction there. It's okay. adjourned at 6.08. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you... A lot of stuff in that short time. Uh, all right, so moved by Deputy Mayor Wallace, seconded by uh, Councillor Bennett. Any discussion? All right, none heard. All right, all those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Contra reminded. All right, you say you have one recommendation? I do, yes. Okay, floor is yours. The town of Happy Valley Goose Bay commits itself to actively support, promote, and work towards being more age friendly. The CSR committee recommends council support an application for funding through the Age Friendly Communities Grant Program. Okay, it's been moved uh, by the uh, CSR committee through the Deputy Mayor uh, Wallace that we uh, recommend uh, supporting an application to uh, Age Friendly Communities Grant Program. Seconded by Councillor uh, Winders. Discussion. Okay, sir. Councillor Bennett. It's right on the. Uh, Right on the back, I think. No, I did see it here. It was an additional recommendation. Yeah, it says here, there's no recommendation. yeah. yeah. just keep going back. Second, Second last, last few pages are some additional Second ones. Last page of each. Yeah. And again, at this stage, it's just uh, the approval from council to. Is that a group? Just a, a question. Is that a group? Age friendly? Yeah. You want to? No, with that, it's it's the actual grant to apply for the grant itself. These deadlines are coming up, so it's. Oh, so the town can use the money. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, that was a group. Not just anywhere. <laughs> oh, I understand. And, 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 okay, I thought I missed something. Here. Thank you. So there's a. If you just turn the page, there's some background information in terms of the age-friendly process. Yeah. All right. So it's been uh, moved and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Oh, sorry. I'd just like to. Uh, we don't often see recommendations for applications, but there are times that it is required for to go along with the application. 
which yep. is why this is coming here. Okay, so we're making the application on behalf of ourselves or somebody else? On behalf of the town. Yeah, okay. Thank you. And because this one is going to a provincial government department, it is required that a motion of council be attached with the application. God love you. And be attached. Uh, <laughs> it will be shortly, I guess. Uh, any further discussion? You good on that, Councilor Benner? Good. Oh, perfect. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. All right. Uh, all those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Contrary minded. <coughs> okay. Are you? That's it for recommendations. That is, thank you, Councillor uh, Brumfield. Well, I forgot there was a next uh, adjustment recommendation for the CPD committee okay. as well. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, scoop back to that one. All right. So let's. Uh, <coughs> yeah. Let's go back to. Uh, well, I'm going to give the floor to Councillor uh, uh, Brumfield and uh, the community planning and development. There is an additional uh, recommendation. Go ahead, sir. Okay. This one deals with the. Uh, electric bus, we were talking public transit system, really. The CBD committee recommends council support a grant, an application for a grant fund, for grant funding to purchase capital assets, which is electric bus chargers and related items, to start up a public transit system in town, Happy Valley Goose Bay, at an estimated cost of 564000 Now that does not mean we're gonna be buying this, this is just you're, an application. You're, yep, okay. So we, we'll hold that for a recommendation or for discussion. Okay. All right. So it's been moved uh, by uh, Councillor uh, Brumfield uh, through the uh, Community Planning and Development that we support an application for funding to purchase capital assets uh, to start up uh, the public, a public transit system in our town. Seconded by Councillor Rumbold. Now discussion, sir? Well, I said this is actually not to purchase the... Uh, equipment itself for the capital assets, but it's an application, a grant application. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the uh, the reason we're seeing it here is that the grant applications, a couple of the grant applications that uh, that's being put in uh, for potentially, you know, further discussions, but the uh, grant application deadline is uh, now coming up very shortly and it'll be prior to our next council meeting. But you are correct. Um, you know, uh, that'll be an active part of our uh, budget conversations and uh, We'll see where everything falls, but if we don't apply now, we won't uh, we won't be able to make avail if any money and funding we can we can come to, and that's exciting news. Any further discussion? All right. All those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 All those uh, contrary minded. Okay, we've uh, accepted that recommendation. So we're good on community planning now and CSR. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's move forward to the next committee, finance and min and policy and a new chair, uh, Council Rumbold. Floor is yours. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the Finance, Admin, and Policy Committee met on October the 7th, se sorry, October the 17th, 2022, and the meeting was called to order at 4.31 p.m. Present were myself as chair, Deputy Mayor Ella Wallace, Councillor Todd Winters, CAO Nadine McCauley, uh, DFO Mike Dalmont, SAT Kelsey Campania, HR Kelly Jack and EA Kathy Eddy. Um, as the mayor previously noted, because of the change in our uh, committee structure, we took some additional time. So we reviewed the previous minutes and action items and there were no errors or omissions noted. Business arising from minutes, the supervisor of assessment and taxation provided information and updated uh, new committee members on previous discussion with Glenn Corporation regarding tax info for the West of Hepler subdivision. Um, detailed discussion and review took place and the information was then left with our Director of Financial Operations um, for further information gathering and that will be presented to the committee members at the next meeting. Uh, the new committee also reviewed the donation policy and youth travel application much discussion, debate, and consideration occurred with the ultimate goal of um, fairly assisting as many individuals and groups as possible. New business, uh, the committee received one property tax exemption request from a local service group and three write-off um, recommendations for taxes and fees as all attempts at contact have been unsuccessful. Other business, the CAO provided an update on the financial audit, and the chair asked for staff input on setting a date for an upcoming by-election. 
manager's reports, the supervisor of assessment and taxation, updated the committee on donations to date, the low income tax relief program and aged receivables, and the uh, director of financial operations updated on his department, the YMCA claims, and the overtime report. Our meeting was adjourned at 6.21 p.m. and our next meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, November the 15th. And I have a number of recommendations to follow. Thank you. So it's moved by uh, Council Rumble uh, to uh, accept the Finance Amendment Policy Committee report as presented. Seconded by uh, Councillor Winters. Discussion? Sure. Councillor Brumfield, I was looking this way, sorry. I got you. Yeah, uh, is there any word on the rata yet? I mean, really, now we're, on, we're basically a full year and since we've been taking over council, we've gotten one year on the scenes to be issues, but that one year that's behind us, this is starting to get out of hand again. I mean, we, we really shouldn't be doing major purchases or doing, taking on multi-year capital works without getting our added up to date. Yeah, there was an, uh, I can speak to that, sorry. Um, uh, there was an update provided to the committee from the CAO. Mm -hmm. um, she told us that she's been working with our, um, with Kim Humphreys professional. So can I, can I, if I can, can I direct that to the CAO to see if there's any <laughs> updated information, seeing that she's right here. I don't like to talk about people, no. but uh, she's right here. So if there's any <laughs> new since committee is where I'm going. Since the uh, finance meeting there on the 15th of October, there hasn't been a, a lot of progress. We ran into a snag with some assets and some entries that were done for 2018, and we're working through that with uh, Kim Humphreys now. Okay, so Other from that, everything else is ready to go. We're just trying to get those last few details ironed in. Okay. So, is there a projected? Is, is there a projected for when 2019 could be completed? It'll be approximately three weeks from when she is able to start. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now I just don't have that start date. Yet, yeah. But we are in contact. Okay. Good. Is that good for so, you, sir? Well, basically, we're at the end of October now. We're going into budget again. Really, we should be in there now, but we will be. The end of the day, she said she hasn't started yet. It's going to take three weeks from the time she starts. This is not going to be ready for budget. And we still got two years behind us. That's we got to catch up because now we got 2021 as well. Yeah. So, 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 yeah, and keep in mind, we, we came into this with none being done. We've cleared up, yeah, I'll get to, we, came, we cleared up 2018. 2019, there has been a, a progress done. I think part of the reason is that she has another commitment that uh, she has, and then she will get to uh, finishing finishing uh, our 2019. But work has begun on 2020, so uh, 2020. So uh, we expect that to go. Um, you know, to to be honest with you, the progress we made, I think, is as quick as we can. Uh, I mean, I can understand trying to look at something last week, but to try to go back and find records from you know, and, and sort through records from years. So, um, you know, are we looking at it potentially within months or weeks or what do you, from a tw completion? 2019? Yeah. Uh, we expect to have it before the end of this year in 2020 started. Kay. Okay. Yeah, we're rolling on yeah. into 2020 where yeah. the 2019 stuff is done. Yeah. But obviously we can't start the app for 2020. Oh, absolutely. The 2019 yeah. is done, so it'll couple of little snags that we're running into, we'll work yeah. through them and hopefully we'll be completed ASAP. It's, it's the best we can we can do. Uh, we'll just make, uh, you know, uh, be cognizant of the fact going into that budget process that we'll make the best decisions in terms of, you know, experience around the table and proven accounts and records. So we'll start, we have a 2018 done and hopefully by the end of, you know, next summer we'll be completely caught up with even our last year's done. So. Uh, is that good for you? Any I further? Oh, I know. I, and, you know, that, that's, that's the update as late as we have it. So, Councilor Rumble, sorry. No, well, uh, it was pretty much the same thing you said. All I was, was going to point out was how far we've come. And that yeah. um, the only things, because this was something that, you know, was, was impacting the town before we were even elected, mm -hmm. but the, um, the change in auditors was the, you know, there's very few things in this that we could control. We did what 
to me was the wisest thing a yeah. council could possibly do, which was to say, we have to cut our losses with our previous auditor, bring in fresh eyes, and I, I personally am very impressed with the headway that we have made because um, there's so much that we can't control, but when, when we're able to say, okay, let's make a change and have a positive result from that change, um, I'm optimistic that having somebody who has provided regular updates and seems very confident and confident is going to uh, set the tone for the future. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. But uh, yeah, we'll continue to uh, we'll continue to ask for uh, those updates, or you know, if if at all possible, can we get regular updates from uh, from your perspective, or you know, on an update schedule if when that when and if that comes becomes available. All right. Um, I think we have to uh, accept it first. We had to vote on it. <coughs> All right, so it's been uh, any further discussion? First, yeah, uh, I just yep. want to say ahead, one sir. thing too is we were without uh, a financial officer for such a long time as well, which put this us, put us way behind. And now we have, I think we have some good people in place. We have a good auditor in place. We have a, a very very competent uh, financial officer, and I think this will you'll see this move along pretty quick. I'm I'm really happy with the progress. Yep. So there you go. That's uh, and you're you're right, absolutely. And like I say, appreciate. You know, going backwards years for two boxes and invoices and computer records is, is a struggle. But uh, we will get there, and we have the right auditor in place to get there. So, Anything further discussion-wise? Okay, all those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded? All right, so we've accepted uh, the report, and you have some recommendations. The floor is yours. Councilor Rumble? Seven recommendations. Um, and the first one is that uh, the Finance Administration and Policy Committee recommend to rescind policy F0029 Youth Travel Policy. Um, and that's, and there will be detail provided in this discussion. Okay, um, it's moved, uh, Finance Committee and Policy through Councilor Rumble that we rescind policy F0029, the Youth Travel Policy. Seconded by? Seconded by Councillor uh, Winters. Discussion. Council Rumbold. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> so as noted in my report, there was lengthy discussion, um, hearty debate. Um, this was not something that um, was looked at lightly. When we rescind a policy, we're actually removing it from our documents. So what we have currently as a town, we have two policies that kind of overlapped and intermeshed. So we had a donation policy and we had a youth travel policy. They did not each have separate pots of money. So it was two policies drawing from one pot of money. Uh, this is something that through speaking with staff, we have been told this is previous, previous councils. This has been a, a um, policy that has been hotly debated, reviewed. Um, a lot of thought has been put into it. Um, we understand the reasoning when the policy was developed to try to keep things separate. Um, but unfortunately, and my own personal feeling is that there was something that was kind of lost in the development of this new policy because we kind of put a timeline on um, who we could assist and when. So with the youth travel policy, um, somebody could request assistance to travel for um, a youth sports or arts event outside of the community and we started at the beginning of the calendar year. Um, we could get a application, and we could get 10 applications in our first month with the policy in place, and we could very quickly um, designate all the funds that were available, and then it would somehow leave us with um, applicants that may have wanted to apply later in the year that didn't even get the opportunity to apply because the funds had been exhausted. So what we've discussed and what we talked about was our goal as a town is to help and assist as many people as possible in a fair and equitable way. So we would like to see the direction of council, and I think some of the, the conversations centered around um, things that we want to do to enhance the youth of this community. And that crosses the sports and the arts and so many different venues. So we have in past years, the, the town of Happy Valley Goose Bay has made 
considerable investment in infrastructure at Kinsman Park with the addition of a splash pad, um, the new YMCA facility. We have a direction that we hope to see in the future where we develop the Mealy Mountain Sports Complex. So we have a vision. We want to assist as many as possible. We hope that people don't interpret this as a taking away of something, but more so as a redirection so that the donation policy still stands. We will still be able to donate to the community, but we'll direct our assistance towards our youth in a concentrated way. Absolutely. Uh, okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Councilor Broomfield. I'd just like to make a short comment on a lot of that. It's fine and dandy, but I mean, years ago, not years ago, just a few years, a couple of councils before when I was town clerk here, things coming out of donation policy today should not be coming out of it. They should be having their own, which they used to line in their budget. Because we make an annual grant every single year to the library. It's been like that since I've been here. We make an annual grant to the Ground Search and Rescue. These are organizations and associations that we've supported and we continue to support. For example, the grant to the library is not cheap. It's a $5,000 annual grant. We're just putting in $20,000 each year in our budget for, for um, donations. That's a quarter gone on that one. So, I mean, if we're going to clean up one, I think we should clean up the other one as well. Come budget time, and put it back where it belongs and not in our uh, donation policy. Yep, and it's a good uh, segue to budget discussions are coming up unless uh, I see the CAO is writing down on another page, so I know she's writing that down. But yeah, yeah that's a good, uh, especially on the ones we're committed to. Um, but yeah, um, I just think repurposing, uh, making, doing, doing better or uh, other projects uh, from that perspective would benefit more uh, folks than, uh, than uh, just the, the youth travel. And it will, uh, you know, for very little impact in terms of, of where it's going. Uh, further discussion? And I have no doubt looking at who's on the Finance and Minimum Policy Committee that that will happen. Any further discussion? None? All right. All those in favor of, uh, sounds kind of backwards, but in favor of rescinding policy F0029, indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded. Okay, motion's passed. Next item, please. Next item is a property tax exemption request, 2021 and 2022, for parcel ID 204140. The FAP committee recommends that council approve granting an exemption of property tax and interest to the Happy Valley Goose Bay Ground Search and Rescue for both 2021 and 2022 in the total amount of $456.69. Okay, it's moved uh, by Council Rumbold that we offer a property exemption uh, to power ID 204140. And seconded by Councillor Winters. Discussion? It's another important group in our community that, uh, that does great work, so. Uh, all those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded. Motion's passed. Next item, please. Write-off home-based business N-O-X-I-N-001. The Finance, Admin, and Policy Committee recommends council approve to write-off business tax of $1,800 and interest of $477 for a total of $2,277. All right, it's been moved by Council Rumbold through the committee that we write off home-based business uh, N-O-X-I-N-001. Uh, seconded by uh, Deputy Mayor Wallace. Discussion? Deputy, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Council yeah, Rumble. Yep, question. just Council Rumble first. She's, yep. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to make the brief comment because this will, I have two more recommendations yep. to follow um, for write offs and just that our staff did an exhaustive attempt to contact or recoup these funds. So these um, write offs don't happen easily. It, there has been a lot of legwork put in, yep. and because they were not able to contact or get a hold of um, the home-based business owners, the business that's defunct or no longer exists, um, that was why these decisions were made. Yeah, thank you, Councillor. Uh, 
How many years are we tackling writing off? It would be whatever the account is. Yeah, the total amount is two thousand. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's three hundred dollars per year taken, is it? That's the total. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so I have a question, and I know we talked about it a little bit uh, before. Is there an opportunity to, to attach this? So if this home-based business, it's the owner of the property, is there any opportunity that in if, say, for instance, you know, uh, John Doe owns a business at 22X Street, uh, owes us $1,500 or $2,000 uh, because of a defunct uh, business, um, is there any opportunity that if that sale of the land or house or whatever was to happen, can we recoup that money that way? Has there been any discussion with uh, municipal affairs? That is something that we're actually researching. Yeah, okay. But in this particular case, it was listed as a home-based business, but it really wasn't. It was an out-of-town business, a business with no fixed address. Door-to-door -door solicitation. Yeah, they came in, they sold products here, but they didn't actually run out of a, a business here, and then they left town after selling their security services. We should have had them on the front with a tax for no uh, fixed address. But anyway, okay, thank you. Um, any further discussion? Okay, uh, all those in favor of, uh, are we doing them individually write-offs or? Okay, uh, of uh, writing off the noted businesses, uh, uh, business tax, all those in favor indicate what I. Aye. Aye. Contra minded, passed. Next item, please. Write-off home-based business, M-O-R-R-I-001. The FAP committee recommends council approve to write off business tax of $2,400 and interest of $903 for a total of $3,303. Okay, it's moved by Councilor Rumbold that we write off the uh, home-based business tax owing by M-O-R-R-I-001. Seconded by? Seconded by Deputy Mayor Wallace. Discussion? Similar situation, I assume. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Contrary minded. Motion's passed. Next item, please. Okay, this one's just slightly different. This is tipping fee write off, D R E A M 001. The Finance and Minute Policy Committee recommends council approve to write off $16.61 for tipping fees and interest outstanding. For Dream Builders, D R E A M 001. <laughs> uh, it's been moved by Councilor Rumboat that we write off uh, Dream 001, business tax and associated interest. Seconded by uh, Councilor uh, Bennett. Uh, discussion? Nice name. I was going <laughs> to say, I guess the dream didn't come through, but. Anyway, uh, I hope we didn't spend a lot of time collecting 1661, but I, I guess we did because it, uh, that's our process. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded. <coughs> Motion's passed. Uh, next item, exciting item. By election timeline. Management recommends a by election be held on Thursday, December the 8th, 2022. The advance poll be held on Saturday, November 26th, 2022. Nomination day be held on Thursday, November 17th, 2022, and that both polls, the advance and the election, be held at the Town of Happy Valley Goose Bay Office Boardroom. All right, so it's moved by uh, Finance and Min Policy Committee uh, under management's recommendation that uh, the by election be held on Thursday, December the 8th. Uh, seconded by uh, Deputy Mayor Wallace. Uh, discussion. Councilor Rumboat. Just to note, Mayor, that um, we this one was a management recommendation because obviously management are the ones that um, organize this, but we have certain constraints that we have to work within from the time that Councilor Duffett submitted her actual uh, official resignation. So this timeline will meet those requirements, and uh, we hope that it will also be. Um, convenient for the citizens of the town because we're not pushing it too close to the holidays. Um, <coughs> so, yeah. Absolutely, I mean, and I would, I would encourage anybody and everybody, it is fun sitting around the table. Uh, um, I guess when you, uh, 
you know, when you're when you're involved, it's uh, it's good. So uh, I throw the gauntlet to anyone to, who wants to get involved in the community. Um, we uh, we uh, we have an empty seat over here that uh, would uh, would be great to be filled. So uh, yes, so I guess uh, in a couple of minutes the race will begin. Any further discussion? All those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Uh, Contra minded. We the race is on. I guess is a good way to go. All right. Good luck I to everybody. One final, one final yes. Edition. All right. One final one. Uh, bank signing authority. Oh, the yes. finance admin and policy committee recommends that pursuant to section 76 of the municipalities act 1999, the town council of the town of Happy Valley Goose Bay shall remove Hayward Broomfield as a signing officer for the town of Happy Valley Goose Bay and shall designate the following as signing officers. George Andrews, mayor. Ella Wallace, deputy mayor. Denise Rumble, counselor. Mike Dalmont, director of financial operations. And Nadine McCauley, chief administrative officer. All right, so it's moved by Councilor Rumble in the committee to we uh, reassign the uh, signing authorities as uh, she's presented. Seconded by Councilor Bennett. Discussion? And just the uh, reason that there's a change, of course, is that uh, I guess through our policies it says the, the mayor signs, deputy mayor, and in the event that we're not here, then the chair of finance and admin. And there's been a change in the chair, of course, of that. So that's the reason for the change. And I hope we don't change many more times because there's a lot of papers. <laughs> All right, so further discussion? All those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded? Okay, passed. Uh, any more from your committee? That is it for me. All right, Thank so finance and admin has been, I'm using my wrong fingerprint. All right, so next on our agenda is municipal services, and I will pass it over to Chair uh, to Council Winters. Thank you, Mayor. Our meeting was, our municipal services committee meeting was taking place on Wednesday, October 5th, 2022. Present were Chair Councillor Winters, Councillor Hayward Broomfield, Councillor Denise Rumbold, Mayor Andrews, ex officio, CAO Nadine McCauley, Superintendent of Works and Services Keith Pye, Engineer Randy Dillon, and Executive Assistant Kathy Eddy. Meeting was called to order at 4.33. There was a review of previous minutes and action items and there were no errors or omissions. Then we went to the manager's report, the manager of public works. The manager's report was attached and reviewed. Crews are continuing to perform seasonal duties as we turn in from the summer, fall months into winter. A uh, report was also received from water and sewer. The manager's report was attached and reviewed uh, and maintenance and testing is still ongoing as per uh, what they do. Then there was the engineering uh, report. Uh, manager's report was attached, uh, basically, the biggest item is the deficiencies at the, CIA, at the YMCA are still ongoing and uh, actually we had a, a great, uh, not a great, I guess, a good meeting with the people at, uh, in charge of the deficiencies and uh, some movement has been taking place on that. Uh, basically that was it. We have two recommendations and the next, uh, next date of next meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, November 9th at 4.30 p.m. Thank you, Councilor Winters. It's moved by Councilor Winters that we accept the Municipal Services Committee report as presented. Seconded by Councilor Bennett. Discussion? Councilor Broomfield. Okay, there, Mr. Chair. What is going on with your, your, right now you have, we got winter coming on, you have no supervisor in your department, and then roads and transport. Are we going to be correcting that problem for the winter? Uh, I would. Probably, I guess they would defer that to the yeah. CAO. Yep. So, so as that's a uh, there, there is ongoing work uh, in discussions with that. Um, that recommendation wouldn't come from from us as as a staff member and not a deputy head. But yeah, I think there's they're addressing that. It would be safe to say, uh, Madam HR CAO, item in progress. HR item in progress. Yep. Anything else? Uh, you good? Me. Yeah, okay. Um, all right, so any further discussion? Uh, just to allude to uh, the fact uh, with the meeting with uh, the contractors, we've had a number of deficiencies since this building has been uh, the inception of and the opening, are, I guess, of the, the Y. And uh, there's been uh, a lot of work put in by staff, um, and uh, we're not seeing any results. So council met with 
the general contractor, uh, our consultant and staff uh, by uh, video call. And we, uh, we kind of uh, laid out some expectations and I, I'm hoping that by the end of this month we'll have a good, uh, uh, we're on a good road to get those resolved uh, because there's no need. We're almost two years into a building now that cost us almost you know, $30 million and we shouldn't be having deficiencies, so that's being addressed. Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor uh, to accept the report as presented, indicate with aye. 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 Contra reminded, passed. You have some recommendations, sir? Yes, I have two. Um, yep. Sewage lift stations upgrades, uh, CADA installation contract award. The municipal sources committee recommends that council accept the recommendations of the Department of Transportation and Infrastructure and sign a prime consultant agreement with Dillon Consulting Limited in the amount of $119,517.20. Okay, it's uh, moved by the Municipal Services Committee through Councillor uh, Winters that we accept, uh, uh, I guess, the recommendation or the direction from uh, Transportation in the awarding of the prime consultant for the noted project. Seconded by Councillor Bennett. Discussion? Just like to note Cut. that it is stated that it is Dylan Consultant, and this is in no way we've been informed that uh, it is no relation to our <laughs> yeah. municipal well, yeah. I was, yeah, no, no. Uh, we uh, we checked that out, and uh, yes, you're absolutely correct. That was your question, Councillor yes. Murphy? All right, good. Good catch, guys. Wonderful. We That was all looked into. All right, uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Country minded. Motion's passed. Next item, sir. Uh, D42 Pump House Upgrades Engineering Contract Award. The Municipal Services Committee recommends that Council sign a prime consultant agreement with Inglobe Corp in the amount of $133,661.05, subject to the approval of the Department of Transportation and Infrastructure. Okay, again moved uh, by the Municipal Services Committee through Council Winners that uh, we recommend Council sign a prime consulting agreement with Inglobe Corp for the noted uh, project and based on approval from uh, transport TNI, Transportation Infrastructure. Seconded by Councillor Bennett. Discussion? None heard. All those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Contra reminded. And that's passed. Thank you, sir. That's it from your committee? Yes. All right. Last but definitely not least, from a committee structure, uh, we are current committee report. So uh, we all turn to public uh, services Protective Services, sorry, and Councillor, the Chair, Councillor Bennett. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Protective Services Committee met Thursday, October the 6th, 12, 10 p.m. Present, Councillor, I'm sorry, Deputy Mayor L. Wallace, Mayor George Andrews, CAO Nadine McCauley, DPS Brad Butler, Community Constable Larry Baker, Executive Assistant Kathy Eddy, <coughs> and myself. Meeting was called to order at 12, 10 p.m. Previous, the review of previous minutes were brought up, no errors or omissions. We have a couple manager's reports. Um, the, to date, there have been 130, up to in the September, there was 130 emergency calls for assistance. The FBO is in full swing in inspections and assisting preparations for fire, fire prevention week, October the 9th to the 15th. Several events were planned for the week. The annual Firefighters Appreciation Supper is scheduled for November the 4th, with details to follow. Uh, the, on the enforcement side, the manager's report was attached. On the, um, the, the enforcement responded to 185 calls for service in the month of September. And give me a second here now. We're talking about uh, meeting committee asked to arrange a meeting with sorry but about the bicycle project 529 is in place and bike registration day is planned instead of a bike rodeo consider considering the time of year and unfavorable weather which we are not getting and I don't want to jinx anybody but this is just fantastic <laughs> the municipal tech has provided the MEO with a data link to all permits allowing the MEO to search information as needed. Um, the date of the next meeting is scheduled for Thursday, November the 10th at 12 p.m. Uh, 
the meeting was adjourned at 1.28 p.m. And we have one recommendation only, Mr. Mayor. All right, let's move by uh, Councillor uh, uh, Bennett that we accept the Protective Services Committee as presented. Seconded by? Seconded by Deputy Mayor Wallace. Any discussion? Although no discussion heard, all those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded? Motion's passed. Your recommendation, sir? One recommendation, sir. ATV and off road vehicle regulations. The Protective Services Committee recommends the Council approve the amendment of, of the Happy Valley Goose Bay ATV and off road vehicle regulations, removing the requirement for town issued license plates for all ATVs and off-road vehicles under Section 3 of the Equipment Requirements. All right, it's been moved uh, by uh, Councilor Bennett uh, through the Protective Services Committee that uh, the ATV off-road regulations uh, committee recommends that Council approve the amendment, uh, removing the requirement for the town to, uh, issued license plates uh, requirement under Section 3. Seconded by uh, Deputy Mayor Wallace. Discussion? Okay. None heard. All those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Contra reminded. Motion is passed. All right. Uh, that uh, brings it to the end of the uh, the uh, reports from committees. Approval of checks. And I'll turn the floor over to, I was going to say Councillor Broomfield, but <laughs> no, change this month, to Councillor Rumbold. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we have, now do I do this as a motion? Yeah. <laughs> I need to make a motion um, that we accept the approval of checks from October the 4th to today's date, October the 25th, in the total amount of $959,672.96. Okay, it's been moved by uh, Councilor Rumbold that we approve checks in the amount of $959,672.96. Seconded by? Councillor uh, Brumfield, uh, any discussion? All those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded, we've approved the checks. Thank you. Now we move into Councillor's form. Where do I go tonight? Uh, Councillor uh, Bennett, the floor is yours, sir. And, and get more engaged in what's going on in the community, community, and then spread the word on <coughs> how things are done sometimes. And, and uh, I lost my train of thought there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just get involved, learn, and uh, and share information so that everybody has a better understanding of what's going on behind, well, not behind closed doors, but behind closed doors sometimes in meetings and, and out in the out in the community. So give her a ladder. Sign up. That's it. Thank you, sir. I'm going to the other end of the U or sort of stylized the U. Councillor Rumble. Pen ready to cross off what I <laughs> uh, thank you, Mayor. A um, couple of things. We are into like in October's almost over and uh, heading into the fall winter, even though we've got unseasonably warm temperatures, for anybody who's taking advantage of raking up those leaves, getting things winterized, just a reminder, our municipal yard waste um, will accept your leaves. So everybody who's doing their cleanup, um, just important this time of year, we get a lot of wind to winterize your properties and uh, clean up around before the snow comes. Um, because it's that season, it is also cold and flu season. Um, I've noticed that there are clinics at the local Kinsman Center. So just a reminder to residents that flu shots and COVID boosters are available. And yeah, sore arms, too bad. Um, no, no, no. Little short-term pain for long-term gain, we're gonna call it. Um, the, because of the timeline, the dates that we're at, we've got Halloween coming on Monday. Lots of little ghosts and goblins will be out. And so reminder to everybody to drive with care and caution because it gets really dark really early now. 
and um, I'm in a very busy neighborhood, I'm sure you are too, Mayor, so we can expect to see uh, large numbers of children with the temperatures continuing the way they are. Guy Fox night, as Deputy Mayor Wallace um, mentioned, it will be, we'll have that bonfire at the arena, but just a reminder to those who will be having backyard fires to keep fire safety um, upmost in your mind because we just had fire safety week and um, the children, one of the children came up with a really great slogan, get out quick before the smoke gets thick. We just all want everybody to be safe with those fires. Uh, as well, if you are looking to be lighting fireworks, fireworks permits are required for anything outside of New Year's and Canada Day. So far, uh, I believe Guy Fox Night is not an exempt date for fireworks, correct? Mm. Nope. So permits are required if that's part of your plans. Um, Oh yes. yes, and yes. So I'm saying, if anybody's having a backyard yes, fire, yes, I was gonna, I was gonna, I was ready to you finish yourself on what yeah. the rules are yeah. as to where, when, how, and um, I know that there's usually a big bonfire on the base. There's the one at the arena. So you know, your safest bet is to bundle your family up, take in the free skating, and um, and be a part of the the social side <laughs> of the community's fire um, for Guy Fox Night. And the only other thing coming up in short order is the Remembrance Day Poppy campaign. So before we have our next council meeting, um, we'll all be sporting our poppies, I'm sure. So we know that the Royal Canadian Legion depends very heavily on the funds that they raise from the poppy campaign. So just to everybody to remember to pick up your poppies. Um, the only other thing I had, I wanted to say a huge thank you to Jacqueline Penny and the other delegates tonight, but anybody who um, you know, comes forward and speaks, and she mentioned that she wasn't comfortable doing so, and it really took her out of her comfort zone. So what I have to say to encourage all of our residents is report, report, report. We cannot stress enough that when there is a public safety incident, although we know that people like to vent on Facebook, and sometimes Facebook is a great venue to make others aware, um, it is also so important to contact um, the local RCMP detachment, either through calling 911 or 896-3383. The officers cannot respond to what they do not know about, and we want to make sure that these numbers are reflected. Um, we know that there is a public safety issue. Our mayor has brought that to the powers that be. But when you have the cold, hard statistics because calls are being logged, that will be irrefutable. So please, to all residents, if there's a safety concern, report. And that's it for me. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Councillor Rumbold. I'll scoot to my friend on my left here, Councillor Winters. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, just got a couple of things. I'd like to congratulate the Amherst Golf Club on another successful season. If you've been paying attention or anyone pays attention to the golf club, they have come leaps and bounds in their, uh, not only their physical environment, but in, in their standing in the community. So like I said, again, hats off to another great season. Uh, congratulations to the Trappers Running Club on another successful event. Uh, again, this is a world-class event where people uh, even, uh, like say, <laughs> No, everybody's crossing <laughs> out because they're at the table. Everybody crosses yeah, out stuff from uh, their list. Yeah, it, 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 it is a great event. Uh, qualifiers for the Boston Marathon. I mean, it, that has come such a long way. It's just a, it's just an amazing event to uh, that happens in our in our town. And the third one is, uh, as uh, mentioned in this uh, CSR report, the town has released a call for the 2023 Labrador Winter Games Community Coordinator for Happy Valley Goose Bay. Now, I can remind everyone that Happy Valley Goose Bay is the uh, past champ or re uh, current champ, so uh, there's some big shoes to fill, and wearing uh, another hat as the uh, chair of the Labrador Winter Games, I'd like to say that there we have come a long way in our uh, planning and expect to see a lot more things coming out regarding the Winter Games as it is going to be an exciting actually spring along with the Kane's Quest, Labrador Winter Games, the 50th anniversary of Goose Bay. 2023 is going to be a pretty exciting year. That's it. Thank you, sir. Well, let's scoot over to Councillor uh, Brumfield. Okay, thank you, Your Worship. Well, I'm going to start off with um, picking up where Councillor Rumble left off. 
I'm one of those who do a lot of the yard raking and all that, and I love this weather, I tell you right now. If it can last like this up until December, I'll be real happy, like everybody else. There might be a lot more yards for you to rake <laughs> if you right. want to. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so enjoy the weather while it's here, because you never know what can happen, because we have winter coming on and go from there, I guess. So enjoy the weather and do lots of yard raking and drop it off to the town and this will do your uh, what do you call that one? The yard waste, not the deep yard waste yes, up there not the on uh, Centennial <laughs> Road, yeah. just off Centennial yeah. Road. It's a busy spot this time of the year, actually. Okay. Uh, basically, we're one year now. We got a full year behind this. We got budget prep coming up now, real soon. So, so we will be busy for the next between now and up to Christmas, actually, and that's going to come and go real quick. Be honest with you. I'd like to remind of the Memorial Day is coming up on November the 11th. On this one here, I think we should have a thought with Ukraine on this one. What they're going through, and it's not good, and knock on wood, we're not doing it, right? Other than that, I'd like to wish everybody all the best, and hopefully the weather will last a bit longer before we get snowstorm, and enjoy. Okay, I'll just talk of snow now. They're blaming you two, right, if it snows. <laughs> All right. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Deputy Mayor. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, congratulations to both the uh, male and female MMC soccer teams, both the provincials last weekend, the weekend before. They brought home silver medals, so hats off to those uh, kids who did a standing job playing. This weekend, we've got uh, the cross-country running. They won at regionals, the female team, so they're heading off to, nat to uh, nationals, provincials, this weekend coming. Um, Thank you, Jacqueline Penny, and of course, uh, MHA Perry Trimper for coming out this evening and speaking. Sincerely appreciate the, your words and your support, and um, we are all in this situation. Public safety is definitely a priority. We know that as residents, um, what it means and what we're experiencing. So we definitely do um, look forward to meeting the minister or and, and obviously any meetings coming forward. So thank you for coming this evening to express that. Uh, wishing everyone a happy and safe Halloween. Kids will be out, like you said, on Monday, so uh, drive safe. Thank you. That's it? Okay, good. All right, um, just a couple quick ones. Yeah, uh, I remember years ago uh, someone uh, was posting when we, there was beers around that uh, beers don't have Facebook, so they don't know if you're going to uh, try to get them. So uh, instead of posting on Facebook, uh, maybe in addition to posting on Facebook, uh, issues that go on, uh, make sure you report things of public safety concern to the RCMP. Directly to the RCMP is, uh, is the way to route, uh, the, the best route to go. And I've personally witnessed over the last few days, uh, you know, very, very quick responses. So this is good. Um, the um, fire protection uh, week that we had, I want to send a huge bouquet to our fire inspector, uh, Mr. LaFrance, because he's worked during that week and, and to with the department. Uh, the open house that they had over there was absolutely stellar. Employees were wonderful. The engagement over there, I would have liked to number how, if they captured numbers of people that were at the open house. But the whole week's activities, whether it was a gentleman in school, the uh, fire, uh, the, the sparky uh, character, uh, anybody and everybody who participated. But it was uh, a huge uh, hats off to, uh, to Mr. LaFrance for uh, our fire inspector for doing his, uh, his due, uh, doing a great job in that regard. And I did meet the young lady who had this slogan. She came here and uh, sat at the table, and we had a chat, and she wore the uh, chain of office. And her friend came along, so it was a good, uh, good time. Just to reiterate, the by-election is there, so it's uh, an opportunity for, uh, for uh, uh, someone to, uh, to come into the fold, as to say. Uh, the biggest thing is that, uh, you know, we're all operating as a team here, so it's not a, a one-person show. Uh, so, uh, you know, we're going to uh, continue down that road and try and make a difference in our, our community. Uh, plans are well underway for the 50th anniversary. Next year is just gonna be a poof. You said we're in one year. I bet it'll be no time at all and we'll be saying year two. Uh, some exciting things we're looking at uh, from a budget perspective that are on the table and opportunities. And uh, you know, I, I had the opportunity today uh, just to casually, uh, totally off the, uh, off the cuff sort of meeting with uh, eight new, seven, sorry, new folks that have just arrived from India within the last three or four days. They're gonna be working at a local uh, place. And uh, just to hear their, uh, 
enthusiasm, how much they like the community, and their just their first impression was uh, was great. So uh, we welcome uh, them and everybody, of course, who uh, who comes uh, to our town. Um, outside of that, we're going into budget and budget uh, discussion. So uh, we'll uh, uh, assume this year again, as usual, we'll have a public input process for budget. Yes. So uh, please, um, you know, uh, if you have issues. Uh, yeah, if you have issues uh, with uh, getting a cue card, huh? if you have uh, issues and concerns that you want to look forward from a funding perspective or ideas, uh, get uh, by all means put them in writing. Or uh, if we have a public session, as the plays process plays out, by all means uh, that input is very valuable. We also want to welcome. Uh, we received our first Ukrainian family. Uh, I had the pleasure of going to the airport and meeting him and his son uh, at the at the airport. Uh, they're here, uh, Mr. Bald with the uh, uh, Pentecostal Church and the Ministerial Association have done amazing uh, work there. Uh, I know their uh, language, uh, they're working through, everybody with them now is walking around with translator on their phone, which is great. Uh, he's, uh, they're settling in very well and uh, we welcome uh, him as well to, uh, and his family and he'll be bringing his wife and, uh, and uh, daughters over as uh, he gets uh, housing and that kinds of stuff straight out. So. Lots of stuff going on, beautiful weather. Another reminder, if you have a, a street light out on your, uh, I know there's not a lot of time now, but if you have a street light out that's uh, on your street, by all means call Hydro and, uh, no call Hydro, call the town. Okay, to call the town and we'll call Hydro. Uh, because uh, yeah, there's gonna be a lot of trick-or-treaters out and uh, we wanna keep everybody as safe as, uh, as possible. Uh, myself and Councillor uh, Brumfield will be attending uh, Municipalities Newfoundland and Labrador along with staff member Greg uh, Osmond uh, in Gander um, and uh, that's uh, good but I, in my final note and I know I'm going to be absolutely just not pleased by somebody but I want to wish our CAO <laughs> a very <laughs> happy 50th birthday and I'm doing that because I won't be in town to attend her celebrations. <laughs> They're having a, I hear rumor has it, the RCMP are having a ball for her. There's a bonfire <laughs> night and all those uh, festivities. So happy birthday. Thank you for what you do. Thank you to all the staff for what you guys do. And with that, I am done. And I'm done because I'm getting a book. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything else to bring before council? Yourself? Before I close? <laughs> Mr. Dillon? No, thank you. Ms. Eddie? And uh, uh, thank you to, uh, to our staff, uh, to Kelsey uh, up there, and I see a couple of our staff members are here. And again, thank you to our MHA who's hid behind a staff member there I can't see. <laughs> uh, it's important that we all collectively deal with uh, or try to deal with the, uh, the transient issue, uh, public safety issue, and uh, working together, that's what we will do. Uh, if you have suggestions, by all means, reach out. I've uh, put my phone number on you know, here umpteen times, but the council is around the table reach out to the town, reach out to somebody, and we'll try to get those ideas because we really have, you know, exhausted from a council perspective uh, our, uh, our options. So, but we're on this together and we will get through, uh, we will get through with it. All right, so with that being said, if there's nothing else, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, moved by uh, Deputy Mayor Wallace, and I understand in recent training that there now is a seconder required for uh, closing the meetings. I'm not sure where that comes from, but we'll take a seconder as Councillor Brumfield. All right, all those in favor? Oh, no, we don't need it. So do we need a vote on that I then? Don't no vote. So. Anyway, <laughs> the, the meeting is adjourned. <laughs>